Okie dokie. So, you know what this is, because you looked at the title. This is my review of Aladdin. I just saw it last night with my good friend James. Hi James. It was... It made me... Speechless. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. It's in live action, in IMAX actually. Actually, I didn't watch it in live action. That's not what it was. It was a movie. It was a live action movie. I didn't actually see it in front of me, you know. Live action. <laughs> Looking at you, Lion King. Honestly, I left speechless. Both of us looked at each other when we finished. We're like, uh, ah. And there's some guy who was sitting next to me. I didn't even know who he was. And we were just like, ah, uh, ah. Hi, but ah, ah, ah. So yeah, I'm just gonna go over it. These are gonna be my thoughts. I wrote down a couple of notes. I hope you enjoy it. If you have your own thoughts, make sure you write them down below. So the way I structured this is I have this set up in three different categories, as I usually do in these reviews. I'm still trying to figure it out. Should I just do like a script analysis, acting analysis, that kind of stuff? Should I just do the good, the bad, the ugly? Um, or should I just run through like act one, act two, act three? I decided to do it in a creative little way. I hope you enjoy. So I'm gonna go through the stuff that made me speechless. Wink, wink. The stuff that I thought was riff raff, <laughs> and the stuff that I think could have taken a whole new direction. <laughs> Just like, cause when I critique movies, I also try to give an input of how I thought it, how I think it could improve, especially the areas that. I don't think we're the strongest. I don't try to just like knock things. I try to give solutions to the problems in this world. And make sure to stick around to the end of the video where I'll give you my final rating of the movie. If you saw the movie, let me know your thoughts down below. I love discussing this with you guys and I read every single comment. If you're new here, welcome to the Disney family. You can subscribe for more. Usually when I get a little dicey on this channel, a little critical, people are like, what? He's not bubbly dislike. So if you really like this video, I'd really appreciate if you help me out and give me a thumbs up because it has been helping like crazy with the YouTube algorithm. So I really appreciate Appreciate you and your time. Starting off with the things that made me speechless. The best cast Disney live action character actor ever has to be Naomi Scott as Jasmine. She brought her A game for this movie. Her song floored me and I had just posted a video the day prior where I listened to a snippet of a song and I was like, okay, it's really good. The version in the movie with the visuals is the most breathtaking thing I've seen in movie in a long time. Dahlia, who was her handmaiden played by Nassim Pedrad from SNL, she was so funny. The costumes were breathtaking. The CGI on carpet was really cool, as well as the CGI in general. We'll, we'll talk about the CGI a little later. Just the comedy. Apparently improv was encouraged on the set by uh, the director, Guy Ritchie. So it's hard to tell which comedic moments were scripted and which ones were just the actors themselves riffing on each other, which was so funny. The best scene had to be when Aladdin and Will Notice how I said Will and not Genie, we'll talk about that a little later. When Aladdin and Genie walk into the palace and first meet the Sultan and Jasmine, it was the funniest thing because it just kept on going and going and building and it made the audience laugh even more. Perhaps this should have been like a comedically heavy movie because that's what a lot of people were, were reacting to in my theater. Or, and because I do my own YouTube video editing, I understand this, the editor is to be praised because the jokes, every single joke landed. Um, and it's not the easiest thing to do that when you're doing comedic timing um, as an editor. And the final thing that made me speechless, and I have to say it, like, Honestly, the song Speechless, sung by Naomi Scott as Jasmine in the movie, was the most magnificent moment of movie history that I've ever seen. It was so realistic despite it being in a fantasy. The setup for it was really powerful and dangerous. She was crying the entire time as she's singing it and the camera would spin around her and even though it's spinning around her, it would come in front of her and she's still like staring at this other world that she's in. She took us to a whole nother world. Like it didn't matter that other people were watching, which is how movies should be. Movies should be like the camera's giving us a little glimpse into this person's life and they're just behaving on their own. And that's exactly what Speechless brought us. The way that it started, like broke my heart um, and I don't want to say it yet <laughs> until people see it but there was like the ignition for this song was so heart-wrenching for her I cried I would go back 
and rewatch the whole movie just for that little snippet. Without that moment in the movie, I think the movie would severely like underperform. But that one, because it's so good, I'm not even hyping you. Like you, if you see this movie, you'll also feel it. She definitely brought us to a whole new world. And that's what I expected from a whole new world, but I got it in speechless. I really can't wait for you all to go see it. And on top of that, there was this one moment in the song as it was happening, I was like, oh no, don't do that. Like, Ugh, people are gonna like comment about this or people are gonna like meme it and it was the one thing that took away from such a powerful song and then After the song finished they like reversed what happened and I was like this could not have ended better The other song that was really cool was friend like me performed by Will Smith It was a lot of CGI and that's why I was saying like they showed us what they're capable of with CGI And it was so cool definitely reminiscent of the animation with like transitions and different color lights and explosions and fireworks and dancing. It was definitely lively in the cave and I kind of thought that it was CGI dancing like or at least it wasn't Mina because they would have as he's dancing there was almost a shadow over his face as he's dancing doing all these really cool moves and then it zoomed back in and his hat would like come back up and you'd see his face and I was like I don't think that's him. And that's the one little thing that like took away from that moment. And now the riffraff, the things that I didn't really like in the movie. I thought that they stood out or didn't fit the Disney brand. Starting off, the script. I know I just said that the script was really awesome, but specifically the pacing of the script. It was almost as if Disney knew that we've seen Aladdin, which is a fair assumption, but they like wasted no time in trying to explain who Jasmine was. She just like shows up on screen in the market and you're just supposed to know, oh yeah, like I remember this part, this is Jasmine. But as a standalone movie, like there is no reason to care for who she is. The pacing at the beginning was so fast, probably because they want to speed through it to open the ending up for the new content that they put in. The messages that they added were so apt at this time in our world that they fit perfectly in the story of Aladdin, so they had to make room for it. And that being said, I don't know why some people are like, oh, Disney, that's like for kids, it's like a kid's movie. But it's amazing how a movie geared for children, geared for children, can have such timeless lessons that all of us can learn from. The beginning of the movie started off with Arabian Nights, as it does in the animation, but I will say that it was Will Smith's weakest song. They showed like the character names, the, the actors names, the directors, the producers, and I don't know why, but it bothered me so much that the font was so difficult to read. Like they tried to make it like this cursive thing, but it wasn't as clean as the title card Aladdin. Like that one looks really good, but they got like a Windows 95 version of that font and it looked so bad, especially it was a like a yellow font on brown sand and I was like, I can't see anything. And then the Aladdin title card came up and it was in the same font and I was like, why does this look like a high school project? There should be like a dust effect and everything should come in like beautiful or even just use Times New Rome, Times New Roman, Times News Roman, Times New Roman. They were being way too experimental, so much so that when the next song came on, which was One Jump Ahead sung by Mina as Aladdin, I don't even know what they were planning with that one. The parkour was cool, his singing, we'll get to it later, but they started doing some weird camera thing where they would like have the camera on Aladdin and he'd be singing, but for some reason, instead of it going like, one jump ahead of the bread line, one swing ahead of the sword, it was like, one jump ahead of the bread line, one swing, and I thought, why did someone click two times speed in Windows Movie Maker? Those kinds of things were really just like disorienting because you're trying to, it's not real, so they're doing their best to make it real or they should be doing their best to make it real. And when these things happen, you're like, oh yeah, I'm in a, I'm in a theater. Also, they were so experimental in the beginning that I could actually see on the edges of the screen the shaking of the camera operator as he or she was walking. Yikes. Like wow, maybe this is not gonna fly, but then all the really good stuff came out in the middle of the movie. I think act one is so underwhelming. It's shocking that no one caught this as a producer, as a director, as any studio executive amongst Disney's, I'm sure, massive line of people who are checking things. Maybe you should send stuff to me. Aladdin sings Riff Raff in his own little shed apartment thing. It's a serious letdown. Iago doesn't really talk. 
he acts like an actual parrot and like repeats things which had some comedic value but largely they only used him as a spy for Jafar and every time you see him on screen it's like oh okay I guess Jafar is gonna find out but other than that he had no real character or personality he was just like a plot point really unfortunate because he was so charismatic and like annoying in the animation and he kind of like got on Jafar's nerves sometimes so they had their own bickering and bantering which kind of made Jafar more likable that he was getting annoyed at this clearly annoying parrot and I wonder whether or not I should put this next point in and I noticed it throughout the movie so I'm just gonna say it it was odd that many of the extras were not actually Middle Eastern and I know that they made Agrabah a port city, so it's like a city for trade and you expect to see all kinds of people, that's totally fine, I'm all for creative freedom. But when you only have one story that's about the Middle East, one fantasy, why would you ever steal other people's light? Like that's their time to be on the screen and you know you had every kind of race there. You had Asians, you had white people, you had black people, which is totally fine. Like. You could do whatever you want with your movie, but if you went out of the way to make your leads culturally appropriate, but even Will Smith was pushing it a little bit, then you know what culturally appropriate is, but I was like, where is, where are the people? Because I would, would have much rather Agrabah the desert city with everyone being culturally appropriate than Agrabah the port city. Because I'm all for creative freedom, but then I question like, was it done out of creativity or out of like necessity or like trying to not get slandered by social media for you know, doing what they did. Because saying Baba and Habibi in your movie does not count as representation whatsoever. The people have to actually be on screen. And then the worst part, the worst part of this entire movie, and it's just so sad. And I don't know if this is like super smart or like super just out of touch, but the marketing for this movie was just everywhere. I think when they first showed everyone the genie, they were like taken aback by how much backlash and how many memes were happening about it. They didn't really change how he looks. He looked like that in the final. They don't look jarring, you just have to get used to it, which is a lot of the movie. It's jarring in the beginning, then you end up, it ends up growing on you like a parasite. Every single day, TV spot, friendship TV spot, wishes TV spot. Like every five seconds there's a new TV spot and they showed so much content from the movie that you almost felt like they didn't have confidence in it, one. Two, they finally showed like a full one minute and a half performed by Will Smith and I watched that and I was like, Am I really going to see this? Like, wow, did they really destroy Aladdin? If you watched it yourself, you're probably thinking the same thing. I ended up liking it too because the second half is wildly better than the first half. So I don't know if they knew that people were gonna like the second half, so they like undersold the performance. The marketing was like, we're capable of this, but we're not gonna show you that. We're gonna show you this. And everyone's like, what is that? So I don't know what the marketing was doing on this movie. And the last part, a whole new direction, the things that I would improve in this movie. Yes, as a fellow Disney lover and avid Disney watcher, there are things here that I think could have been improved upon. So, if I had three wishes to fix this movie, what would I do? Wish number one, I would make it more extravagant. What do I mean by that? Because they showed us the capabilities of their CGI in Friend Like Me and they blew me away. I almost felt robbed in the scenes that should have been super extravagant. They like set the standard because it was so early on in the movie that every other number that came after that, I was like, but you're capable of this. Prince Ali's number had a lot of human dancers and human actors in actual costumes, which is so cool. But you have to realize that like, you took the creative freedom to make this a port city Agrabah, okay? They don't need to all come in on camels. Like I was just wondering why no one was like driving a ship onto the, the harbor and like some of his people were coming off, like chanting from there. like. Why was it not more immersive? It was cool what they did with the singing and the dancing and some of the Bollywood dancing, like that was really cool, but it wasn't grand. Again, it felt like a live musi musi <laughs> a live musical performance. Likewise, in A Whole New World, they were just over water and then over other water and then had some fireflies and then just like singing. I wasn't expecting an exact replication of the animation, but I did expect some, you know, grandiose adventure just like they did in animation. But there was nothing, it was just like them 
on a carpet that was apparently going so fast that they couldn't do anything else but hold on versus in the animation like they were able to lie down play with the water maybe they couldn't go all the way to china but they could have at least gone to egypt and showed the pyramids the interaction with the guy who like breaks the nose like things like that were funny interaction with birds in the sky they could have done the cloud swirl like those things don't need to be like super realistic people understand that this is a fantasy it's a flying magic carpet do something else besides just like water in a very dark cgi space like it was so dark blue it was such a bland number and i was shocked that disney allowed that to happen in this movie a common theme was the visuals were more stunning than the singing except when it came to naomi scott but this couldn't even have been saved by naomi scott like her vocals were so good that it made you think wow mina can't hold up to her and the visuals are so boring. And then the other weird thing that I will say, Jafar's staff powers, <laughs> his hypnotizing effect, honestly reminded me of a classic YouTuber vlog edit where like, you will follow everything that I say and like and subscribe. Like that's exactly what it felt like. And I was like, why does this feel so cheap? They could have done so much more. And that's kind of honestly like the theme. The other thing that I would improve is Genie. I think Will did a phenomenal job with the task at hand. Of course, everyone's going to compare him to Robin Williams, but now that the movie's out, yeah, we can compare him to Robin Williams because this is a live action version of the animation. He does his own version of Genie, but it's hard to tell where Will ends and where Genie begins. And that's why I, earlier in this uh, review, I said Will instead of Genie because he just seemed like he was Will the entire time, which, you know, you could take that however you please. On top of like his already titanic powers over Mina Masood's acting, it just made it seem like he was, like this was a Genie movie and Aladdin is like the backdrop, which made me also think that initially I think this movie was pitched as the genie movie and then they were like oh this is actually Aladdin and maybe there are talks to make an actual genie movie in the future. It felt like Aladdin was serving genie's character arc rather than genie serving Aladdin's character arc who is the title of the movie Aladdin. And speaking of Aladdin or I should say you know lack of a character arc. My wish number three would be to recast Aladdin and I know that that's like a really big thing to say but hear me out allow me to explain this. When you have a Disney movie, you need to be sure that this is going to work. And if you are having a movie musical that demands intense acting, singing, and dancing, it just baffles my mind that they would pick an actor, and he said this of his own words, I don't sing and dance, but I was picked because of my acting, and they taught me to sing and dance. And I was like, even the acting wasn't like super good. In the beginning he didn't sell me, in the middle he sold me. Like when his comedy came out with Will Smith and when he was interacting with Naomi Scott, like that was sold to me. And at the end he was blah again when Jafar was threatening Jasmine. Like the camera's on his face and he's just like, the entire time. He's like looking up at Jasmine and I'm like, dude, do you not care? And his singing was super subpar, which also makes me think why didn't Disney just like hire a singer to sing for him and then he just like lip syncs the whole time like they did in High School Musical? Will doesn't sing either but he like can pass for a semi-decent singer. Naomi definitely sings and so it just makes him look like he's the worst singer and the worst actor and the worst dancer and like it's supposed to be his movie. After watching it I still have many questions. Why is he not shirtless? Why is his hair looking like dry wax the entire time. It is just like stuck in this little weird thing and I, it's not nitpicking, it's he's the title character. He needs to be perfect. Emma Watson as Beauty and the Beast, whatever your opinion of that movie is, she looked like Belle. Her dress looked like Belle. Even her like blue outfit looked like Belle. There's a source material. This is a Disney movie. When are they ever going to remake Aladdin? This is, this is what we have and they should have made sure that it's perfect. The entire time it felt like things were happening to Aladdin rather than him being the main character of his own film. And with titans like Will and Naomi claiming ground with their performance, it almost became a bother to watch him on screen. Even Naomi with what she was given claimed the story. I would even say that this is her movie. This is a Jasmine movie. And if Disney did choose to go down the path of hiring an actor and teaching them to sing and dance, 
It honestly felt like his singing was just speaking words. Riff raff, street rat, I don't buy that. Like he was hitting the notes, but it didn't feel like it was coming from a place of passion or internalizing the story. And that's all what goes into making a, a really good performance and a really good song. And the final thing I'll say that doesn't really belong in any of the categories is Jafar. It's hard for me to have an opinion about Jafar. Yeah, some of his performance was bland, but it did feel as though he was Jafar. Like he became this character. You could feel that he internalized it and like damaged him when people spoke negatively about him. To me, as someone who like acts on the side, it did feel convincing that he did his homework and his research and he internalized who Jafar was because like it got him angry and you could see it in his eyes or like biting his tongue back before he got himself into more trouble. It was, it was there. So I just want to give him another shot. But hey, you could argue and say that the villain's supposed to bring it even when they don't have the time on screen. So it could be an actor thing. So final thoughts, I would say that the tagline of this movie is that it is set up as a story about Genie becomes a story about Jasmine and is titled Aladdin. When they do the honest movie review, that they'll do the whole thing at the end, it'll be like, Jasmine, like in the Aladdin font, because that's what this movie ended up being. I would rate it a, drum roll please, mm, I could put the sound effect in, but it's more fun to make my own drumming. A 7.9 out of 10. Without the speechless performance, the movie would be like a 4 or 5 out of 10 for me. She augmented the entire movie. If you are questioning whether or not you should see this, go for just Naomi, specifically that moment. And go for Dahlia too, her comedy's hilarious. Is he my Aladdin? Nah. Is he my genie? Well, he's a genie. Is she my Jasmine? A million times, yes. We could not have wished for better. This movie, in summary, is about courage, comedy, costumes, carpet, and CGI. Thank you all so much for watching this with me. What are your thoughts about the movie? Have you seen it yet? Ha are you going to see it? Write all your thoughts down below. I love discussing this stuff with you. And as always, be safe, be strong, be swag. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye. Is it hot in here or is it just Agraba? <laughs> mm -hmm. I love you.